Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here in Louisville, Kentucky, St. Stephen Baptist Church with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments on a daily basis with the master, looking at the word of God, taking it from the back then and bringing it to the right now, building the bridge from the back then to the right now. All right. Thank you for joining me as we continue our theme for the week, the serenity prayer how to have peace when life is going to pieces. And now we're looking at the prayer itself. The first three days we looked at uh, the context of the prayer. Now we're looking at the content of the prayer. We looked at line one yesterday and line one said, uh, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. There's some things I cannot change. And the sooner you accept that, the better off you're gonna be. And you need a, in your mind a category, can't, ex can't change this, can't change this, can't change this. I'm going to give it to you, God. When I give it to you, I'm through with it. Don't worry if you're going to pray. Don't pray if you're going to worry. So put in your mind, your category, some things you cannot change. And once you cannot change it, leave it alone. Don't waste any emotional energy on things you cannot change. Because if you waste emotional energy on the things you cannot change, you will not have energy left to change the things that you can, which is line two of the prayer. God, give me the courage to change the things I can, which means this is not a passive prayer where we just sit around and let God do everything. We're supposed to give to God the things we can change, and then we're supposed to be about the task of changing the changeable. Now, don't forget that phrase. Change the changeable. There's things in your life that you can change. And the things in your life that you can change, change them. You know, like the man who was saying, oh, my God, all week long, all I've had for lunch, my wife, all I've had, rather, was a peanut butter sandwich. He didn't say my wife. He just said, all my week, all my life, I've had a peanut butter sandwich. And somebody said, well, why don't you tell some, why don't you tell your wife to fix a ham sandwich? And he said, look, look, uh, don't, don't blame my wife. Uh, I fixed this. So why are you complaining about something that you don't like, that you fixed, and you have the power to do something about it? Why are you complaining about something that's on television that you don't like, and right there in your hand, what do you have? You have the remote control and you can change it. And God is saying, I know there's some things in life you cannot change, but hey, that's not everything. There are some things in life that you can change. And the number one reason why you can't change them is it's in the sentence. It's in the second line of the prayer. I want you to look at this again and notice the number one reason why some things that can be changed are not being changed. It says, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. God acknowledges you can't do anything about this. But then it says, courage to change the things I can. Why don't we change the things that we can change? Why don't we change the changeable? What's the first word? Courage. We don't change the changeable because we lack the courage to change those things that are changeable. Um, for example, anytime you try to really change some things, uh, it always brings about tension. Right now, our church is going through a transition where we're moving from uh, on traditionally on campus, everything being on campus, to being online. A lot of things are going online. We'll still have on campus worship, but we also have online. We'll still have on campus Bible studies, but we also have online. And changing that, having the courage to change, brings tension. And the primary reason why we don't change some things is because we don't want the tension that comes with it. Many times we as Christians act like that being a follower of Jesus means staying out of stuff. Listen, no football team wins a football game because they avoid penalties. No basketball team wins a basketball game because, hey, we avoided fouls. Avoiding penalties does not win a football game. Avoiding fouls does not win a basketball game. Because only when you put points on the scoreboard, doing something, changing something, make moving forward, progressing in something is what, what uh, really produces change. 
Um, this prayer is not a prayer for inactive people who want to be passive. Why did Jesus separate the sheep from the goats in Matthew 25? And he said, the sheep will go to heaven, the goats will go to condemnation. He said, not because of what they did, it was because of their inaction, not doing anything, not trying to change anything. He says, I was hungry, you didn't feed me. You were inactive. I was naked, you didn't clothe me. I was in jail, you didn't come to see about me. I was homeless and you didn't estrange you. You did not take me in. It is the inaction, not doing anything. It takes courage. I don't think there's probably been any movement um, that has shaped America like, the, like the, the, the bus boycott in Montgomery that started December the 1st, 1955, when Rosa Parks sat down on that bus. Three months after uh, 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 Emmett Till was lynched. And for, look, about over a year, they walked and carpooled, and they were harassed by the system, by the police, by the Klan. They walked everywhere because of the policies, and it took courage. Mother King Jr.'s house was bombed when his wife Coretta and his young daughter was in the house, bomb. Dr. King was arrested and could have spent a year in jail doing hard labor because they were accused of violating an ordinance in which you could not boycott. He was innocent, but he could have gone to jail doing hard labor, it, but it took courage for them to change, to change some things. And it takes courage to say, you know what, I'm not gonna be a people pleaser. I'm not going to scratch while I'm not itching. I'm not gonna let people use me anymore. I'm not gonna be a doorman. I'm not, I'm not gonna just, just let people take advantage. I'm gonna stand up for myself. That takes courage to change the things that you can. It takes risk. Sometimes people won't, won't like you. They'll misunderstand you, but that's okay. Some things in your life need to be changed, and you need to ask God to give you the courage to change the changeable. One of my favorite stories is uh, the story of Zacchaeus. Remember Zacchaeus, who was a tax collector. He was a traitor to his own people because he took taxes from the Jews to give to the Romans, who were the enemies. And when Jesus was coming through Jericho, he was a short man, and he climbed up a tree, a sycamore tree, in order to see Jesus. And Jesus saw the tax collector, the Clarence Thomas of the day, and said, come down, I'm, I am going to your house. Because he wanted to change Zacchaeus, and he was going to Zacchaeus' house. And when Jesus said, I'm going to Zacchaeus' house, Luke chapter 19 and verse 7 says this, but the people were displeased. He has gone to the house of a notorious sinner. They grumbled. Look at the message translation. The message translation says this. Everyone who saw the incident was indignant and grumbled. What business does he have getting cozy with this crook? Jesus knew that if he was going to change not only Zacchaeus, but change the conditions of his people, that he had to take a risk, that he had to have the courage to change the things he could change. And that was Zacchaeus. And as a result of him doing that, Zacchaeus says to Jesus, he says, a half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I've defrauded or cheated anyone, I'm going to pay reparations back to them fourfold. And guess what? Everybody who was poor, who had been cheated by Zacchaeus, got a rebate check. And they were wondering, well, how did I get the rebate check? They got the rebate check because Jesus had enough courage to risk being misunderstood in order to go home with Zacchaeus. And the same folk who criticized Jesus for going home for Zacchaeus are the same folk that got a paycheck, got a check because Jesus, now had Jesus not gone home with Zacchaeus, them folk would had still been destitute. They would have got their money back. And there's some things that will not happen if you don't have the courage to make them happen. If you're too concerned about what people think about you, if, or if you are a people-pleasing person that has to be affirmed by people, then you won't have the courage to change the things that you can change. And can I tell you in closing, the number one thing that you can change, if you can't change anything else in this world, you don't like your politician, you can't change that. You don't, even when you vote, sometimes you can't change that. You don't like public policy, even when you try to change it in protest, you can't change that. But there is one thing that you can change. And the one thing that you can change that you should change is you. 
So maybe you need to really narrow the prayer down and say, God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change and the courage to change me. I'm the one that needs to change. My attitude's the one that needs to be changed. My habits need to be changed. Uh, the direction of my life needs to be changed. My codependencies with people need to be changed. If I can't change anyone else, change yourself. And that's not unimportant. Do you know why? Because changed people changes people. When you act different, people treat you different. So if you can't change your mama, you can't change your daddy, you can't change your boss, change yourself and ask God to give you the courage, the courage, you lion, you courage. Remember the Wizard of Oz? Courage. Ask God to give you courage to change some things. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word today and bless your people and give us courage to do the right thing. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for being with me. Another powerful point to ponder. Look, if you don't have a church, I'd like to extend an invitation to you to become a part of St. Stephen Church. Contact us here. Email us, newstart at ssclive.org. We will get back with you. Peace and blessings to you. Thank you for joining me again. We'll pick up on this tomorrow. But until then, you stay safe, stay sane, and don't forget God is in control. See you tomorrow.